welcome to our video tutorial for this multicolor bandana that you can see Melba wearing here. So we hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this bandana, you'll need yarn in anywhere from two to six or more colors. Okay, I'm going with three, and let's show you the one that I've made previously to give you a good idea with what, you know, of what I've done previously. So I've used three different colors, and I'm going to do this a similar thing with these three colors. Um, yeah, you, you know, in theory, you could go six different colors, because I've got six rows here. You might add extra rows if you want a larger bandana. Um, if, or if you're using a finer weight yarn, you might choose to add extra rows. You know, you, making this in a rainbow would just look beautiful. And actually, I'll probably eventually refilm this as a rainbow because I think it's it would look fabulous. Um, you, yeah, you could use just two colors. You could use three colors like I'm going to do. Um, if you added a couple of extra rows, you could do four colors in a symmetrical way. So, you know, lots of creativity for you there to explore. So the white yarn that I'm using, it's a, about a four weight. It's a cotton acrylic blend, and I've got this gray, pale pink, and blue. And I'm going to do a similar color, color, you know, sort of color variation to what I'm, I've done here. I'll probably go gray, pale pink, and blue. Okay, so you can, you know, choose your colors and, uh, you know, decide how you want this banner to, bandana to look. You'll need a crochet hook to correspond to your yarn, and I'm going with a four millimeter today for my yarn and the, you know, the sort of look that I want. You'll need some scissors, a darning needle to weave in your ends, and a tape measure is optional to take a measurement from your cat's neck circumference. Uh, you know, always advisable to have a good idea of where your cat sits in, in you know, in at least in as far as its neck circumference is concerned i'll include in the description box below a just a, it's just a standard guide to you know common cat breeds and their you know their ballpark of um, neck circumference okay so you can refer to that guide and because this is a tie up bandana it's it's you know it's pretty easy to to size you can just alter the length of the ties according to you know how how you want it to fit your cat or if you've got a multi cat household you can you know make slightly longer ties so they fit it fits all of your cats so yeah really easy to fit with this with this tie up um, tie up design okay so just optional to have a tape measure Okay, to, so to make this bandana, you'll need to know how to make a magic ring, how to make a chain, how to double crochet, how to make a tall double crochet. So that is also known as a herringbone double crochet, and I'll show you how to do that. It, it's a variation on the double crochet that just makes a little bit of extra height. Uh, you'll need to know how to double crochet two together, and we'll be changing color colors um, at the end of the double crochet two together and I'll show you how I do that From there you'll need to know how to weave in your ends and tidy up this raw edge here And before we do that we'll be making ties so you can choose I've ma I'll be showing you two different ties So this one here is just a simple chain and this one is with a slip stitch down the chain So you can choose if you want these fatter ties or just a simple chain uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Just, you know, pretty basic techniques and you can have a lot of fun and, and create with the, the color the color scheme or the, the color palette. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so just to give you an idea of how we're going to build, build this, because I, I always think that perspective helps. So we're going to start here at the center and we're going to build moving outwards. Okay, so we're going to build from this center point here, moving out. Okay, so take your color one, and we're going to make a magic ring. So you do that however you do your magic rings. And just a reminder, I don't run through in any great detail these basic techniques. So, you know, if you need to brush up before you get started, then please do. Otherwise, you've got your magic ring. Chain two. 
to give yourself a little bit of height. It doesn't count as a stitch, just a little bit of height. And you're going to place three double crochets into the ring. So I use US terminology. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then add two more of those into your ring. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. One more. And then we're going to make a tall double crochet here. So it's, it's pretty simple. It's just a slight variation on a normal double crochet, but it'll just make a double crochet that's slightly taller than these other three. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop as you normally would, but this time keep going and pull through that first loop. Okay, and my yarn's just split there. Let me just pull those through, yeah. Okay, so then we're going to yarn over again, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so let's just, I'll undo that and let's just do that again. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, but keep pulling that loop through the first loop on your hook. Then yarn over, pull through the first loop, and then yarn over, pull through both loops. So it just adds a little step in there that gives us this double crochet that's slightly taller than the others. Okay? And then we're going to move on and place two double crochets, two more double crochets into the ring. Get all those strands. There we go. So two more double crochets. My yarn split a bit there, I'll probably go back, <laughs> but after we've done this. So now what we're going to do, we're, our last stitch in this, um, in this first row, we're going to double crochet two together, and at the last part of it, we're going to change colour. Okay, so have your colour two ready. So yarn over here, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So half finish your first double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through three. Now, because we want to change colour, we're not going to yarn over with and pull through all three with this first with this colour now. Okay, so we're now what we're going to do is we're going to change colour to colour two. Okay, so how I change colour, and I'll show you, this is my method, but you, you do it your way if you want to. So I just place my yarn over my hook, so the tail end, the, the short end is here, and my working end is in the front. And then I just pull through that colour, and then I tighten these, these tail ends. Okay? So that's how I change colour. You do it a different way if you've been taught a different way, or know a different way, or prefer a different way. And then you're going to close your ring, close your magic ring. Okay, so we're moving on to using color two. Okay, so you'll want to, you'll want to snip off your color one end. Okay, so, you know, leave, a, leave an amount for sewing, but you can snip that working end off now of your color one. And we'll reuse colour one again on row four. But for now we're moving on to row two with colour two. So just once again, just give those those tail ends a bit of a just a bit of a tug. Now we're going to chain two as we did at the beginning of row one and turn. Now you're going to place two double crochets in that first stitch. One and two. Okay. And then one double crochet in the next two stitches. So one and then the next stitch or the third stitch one. And then you're placing in the next stitch two double crochets. 
one and two. So this is our, our turning corner stitch. In that same stitch, a tall double crochet, so let's do that again together, pull up a loop, but keep pulling that loop through, yarn over, pull through that first loop, yarn over, pull through two. Then same stitch, two more double crochets, one and two. So that's going to bring us around the corner and eventually become the point of our bandana. Okay, so this part here. So we've come down to this point. In the next two stitches, one double crochet. Oops, yarn split again. In the next two stitches, one double crochet in each of the stitches. One and two. And in the very last stitch, so remembering our, our chain didn't doesn't count as a as a um, as a stitch, in that very last stitch, one double crochet. And then our final stitch in that same last stitch is a double crochet two together. And remembering we're changing colour at our last pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then we would normally yarn over, pull through all three, but we've got to change colour. So grab your colour three, and we'll just change in exactly the same way. So place your yarn over your hook and pull through with your new colour. And then tighten. And you can snip off your colour too here, just to make that easier. And then we're going to chain two once again. And then I just go back and I tighten again my tail ends. And then we're going to turn. Now, when you change colour like this, and if you tighten, you can change, you kind of lose that first chain. You can add an extra chain if you want to, if you want that extra height. I don't, I don't bother for this, especially for this project. I don't feel like I need that, need that height. Okay, now we're just going to continue on. So in that first stitch, we place two double crochets. So you'll start to see a pattern emerge quite quickly with this bandana. So that first stitch, two double crochets, and I'm just going to pull those tight again. In the next one, two, three, four, five stitches, we're placing one double crochet. So that will bring us up to the turning stitch, which is the tall double crochet. One, two, three, Four. You don't actually have to count these, just as long as you can identify your tall double crochet from the previous row and you'll work up to that point. Okay, so five. In the tall double crochet, we'll repeat that, repeat that turning sequence. So two double crochets, one and two. A tall double crochet. Pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Two more double crochets in that same stitch. One and two. One double crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three. And four and five and that brings us to the final stitch so we're going to do the same as before so yarn over double crochet once in that stitch 
and then you're going to double crochet two together but changing color at the end as you have done previously so I'm going to change back to my color one so placing that over my yarn pull through and I'll snip off my snip off my color three just tighten those a little bit and then I'm going to continue on one two and turn so now I'm moving I'm moving on just repeating those those same rows so we just add the extra stitches in here and like I said you don't even have to count them just as long as you can find so the easiest way to find the turning the the corner stitch is to identify the two double crochets before it then the two double crochets after it and then you'll see that that center stitch is the one that you'll do your turning sequence so you don't even have to count how many stitches here and that means you can just increase this for as you know as many rows as you want okay so as long as you do the two double crochets in the first stitch one double crochet in each stitch up to your turning stitch your sequence of turning so two double crochets one tall double crochet two double crochets and then one double crochet up until your last stitch where you do that that uh, end sequence so one double crochet and then double crochet two together okay now just to explain why we do the double crochet two together is it just helps to account for the chain okay it just helps to make this edge a bit more even okay if we didn't double crochet two together at the end of the row you'd find that the chain would kind of stand out as extra okay kind of it, it mean, means that this edge wouldn't be quite as um, you know quite as flat as it is okay here so it's quite a raw edge anyway so you want it to be you know as as uh, even as you can as as you know as level as you can so I'm going to continue on. I'm going to finish off three more rows in my, just repeating the same sequence, my gray, my pink, and my blue. So you go ahead and you finish as many rows as you want to in whatever colors you're doing. Just, you know, change your colors at the end of your row or whenever you want to change color. So I'm going to go up to row six. You keep going if you want to go further, and I'll see you when I get to the end of my row six. Okay, so there I've finished my six rows. So now what we've got to do is from here start to chain for our ties. So what I've done on this particular bandana is I've just made a chain, okay, and then woven in the end at the bottom. Okay, so you've got a couple of choices. You can just make, if you want these kind of thinner chains, like I've done on this one, you can um, just make a chain and then weave in your tail end at the end, so you yarn over, pull through and tie off. Um, or if you want slightly thicker ties, you can just slip stitch all the way down back to the end of your chain. So you've got two choices there, depending on how you want your your ties to look. So go ahead and make a chain to the length that you need for your ties. So that will be your cat's neck circumference, um, you know, allowing for the ties and allowing for however you want to, you know, fasten it, whether you want to make a bow or you want to tie a knot or however you want to fasten it. So I'm going to go ahead and chain about 40 maybe 50 max chains I like to tie a bow in my in my ties so what have we got there one two three four four five six so make sure you count your chains so you can duplicate it on the other side so I'm going to go ahead and make the length of the chain I need you do the same and I'll see you shortly Okay, so I've got the length of the tie that I want there. Now, for this one, I'm going to actually slip stitch down the length of the chain. Okay, so as I showed you before, this one I didn't. I just left the, the, um, just left the chain. So what you would do if you just want the chain and you want finer ties, you would just yarn over, pull through, tie off, and then you would just 
weave your tail end up through the base of the chain here or the top of the chain here okay otherwise if you want to slip stitch you can just start slip stitching down the length of your chain to give you your ties so I'm going to go ahead and finish that and I'll meet you when I get to the base of my chain and then we're going to tie off and tie on to the other side to create the second tie okay so I'll see you I'll see you shortly okay so I'm at the base of my chain here so I've just got one more chain to slip stitch into and you can see it gives you a you know a more solid tie I kind of like how it also makes them them curl a little bit okay so then you're just going to slip stitch into the side of your work here just to secure that tie and then yarn over and pull through and leave a tail for weaving for sewing in okay and then we're going to tie on to the other side and create our second tie so just find that last stitch now how I tie on is very similar to how I change color I just place my yarn over my hook pull up a loop chain one and then I just tighten tighten the ends and then I'm going to go ahead and create my second tie exactly as I've done my first tie so I'll see you back here and then we'll start to tidy up this raw edge here okay so I've made my second tie there now we've got the business of weaving in all our ends so what I would advise that you do is go go through and just like tighten all these ends up okay so just pull make sure you've got a nice firm color change there you might need to reclose your ring if you if your ring has opened so just pull those all tight obviously don't misshape your work but you just want them to be as firm as possible now we're going to let's start with our our well my pink one here so we're just going to as neatly as possible weave in these tail ends and at the same time just just create a little bit of just a little bit of tidying up along this raw edge so I'm going to assume that you know how to weave in an end it's just one of those basic crochet techniques that I'm kind of expecting that you know so I'm just going to weave maybe decide which is going to be your front which is going to be your back and I'm just going to weave it's quite easy to weave into double crochet so I just weave up into here okay so just keep checking this raw edge here how how it's sitting and then I'm going to double back and come up here back up to the top and I'm going to check out how how my edge is here I think that's looking fine I mean you know because it's a raw edge it's not going to be perfect but I would just you know just tidy it up so it looks nice and neat and like I said on my other one so you can see you know you've got a few little bumps here and it's a raw edge but it's sitting under the neck so it's not it's not a major it's not a major deal but I just like to tidy up my work as best I can so you're just going to go through each of those each of those tail ends and weave them in and, and tidy them up and of course you'll weave in those tail ends from the the ties so I'm going to go ahead and do all that and I'll meet you once I've done it and we'll we'll come back and just sign off together so see you soon okay so here's my finished bandana after I've done all the stitching and weaving in along the edge there so now you can see the two together this one with the finer ties and this one with the 
larger ties which sort of curl a bit because of the slip stitch so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial this one you can really you know really have fun with colors color um, combinations um, you know it's a it's a good one to have a, a good play with so I'm gonna one day like I said at the beginning make this in a rainbow I think it will just look gorgeous so I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that you are inspired to you know have fun with colors it's um, quite a simple pattern but you can really you know you can really make it your own with the color combination so please send you what you know what you come up with how you create with this pattern to catventurous.community at gmail.com and you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet so I'd love to see your photos of you know how it's turned out for you so I love to you know create a fundamental pattern that you can make your own so yeah thanks so much for being here hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you soon bye good girl. Ready? Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this. Thank you.